Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about AB5 and and uh, driver's legal rights and uh, DoorDash and Instacart. But first, let's listen to just a little bit of the Rolling Stones. Just a little bit. It's not just so good. Okay. Sometimes, you know, you just you just want to feel feel something. And man, that is a great song to feel. Let it bleed by the Rolling Stones. I love it. Okay, but we're not here to talk about the Rolling Stones. I will play that after I'm through recording this little bit. Uh, so, I'm recording this today. It's Monday, 8:39 on March 2nd, and I wrote an article this week all about um, DoorDash. DoorDash. DoorDash is in the news, and I'm going to share with you what I learned uh, because it's pretty interesting. So as you all know, in California, we passed a law called AB5, Assembly Bill 5, which basically says that uh, uh, if you want to be categorized as a independent contractor, you have to be able to answer these three questions properly. Uh, It's called the ABC test. And those of us who are in the gig economy and we drive around, uh, we cannot answer those those questions properly. So we are then classified as uh, employees. And uh, Uber and Postmates uh, tried, tried to take their case uh, and said that uh, the state of California was being unconstitutional uh, by enforcing AB5, and that was uh, that was thrown out of court. So, uh, but let's talk about DoorDash. So, uh, so what happened is DoorDash, right? Um, five thousand, over five thousand of their drivers uh, filed uh, individual arbitration cases against DoorDash. And the reason they did that is because you and me as drivers, when we agreed to drive for Uber, for Lyft, for DoorDash, um, we sign an agreement, right? Remember at the beginning, there's like a bunch of pages of stuff and you probably just scrolled through it and you clicked accept, right? Because you you have to accept or otherwise you can't drive. So one of the things you agreed to was that you would not... um, work with other drivers and file any kind of a joint lawsuit, right? Uh, Any kind of class action suit. That's part of the agreement you made. And you said, if you have an issue, you would go to arbitration individually. The thinking on the company's parts is that the cost to go to arbitration would be more than the possible gain you could get by going to arbitration, so very few drivers would ever go to arbitration. Well, what happened was 5,000 drivers all filed their individual um, arbitration cases. And uh, the company that represents DoorDash and would be handling those arbitration billed billed (laughs) DoorDash for nearly $12 million in fees. Because it's very expensive to, you know, to uh, handle 5,000 cases. 
So then what DoorDash did, um, they refused to pay. And um, they went to a judge, and um, the judge's name was William Alsup. And they basically said, uh, you know, we can't afford this. We would like to handle all of these, uh, all of these drivers as one group. And in a striking opinion, I'm reading this from the Washington Post, in a striking opinion, Alsup also wrote that the workers wish to enforce the very provisions forced on them and use the remnant of procedural rights left to them, right, from the agreement that we all signed, which, which uh, DoorDash created. In other words, a business that imposes individual arbitration on its workforce must accept the risk that it might have to honor its end of the bargain. So the judge basically said, uh, no way, deal with it. You need to, uh, you know, honor your agreement. You need to honor your agreement. So now DoorDash does have to uh, negotiate with all of those 50 drivers individually because that's, uh, that's what's in the agreement. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, what, um, what's going to happen. Um, this article is called DoorDash's Multi-Million Dollar Arbitration Mistake. So, um, as you as you may know, I've I've got a uh, I, I also have an arbitration suit um, against Uber and Lyft, which is uh, being developed as we speak. And uh, the law firm I work with, which is called Potter Handy LLP in San Diego, um, they're handling my my case, and they've got several hundred um, drivers who are filing suit against uh, Uber and Lyft. So that's something you can consider, especially if you've been a really active driver for the last four years. Um, AB5 says we're entitled to back pay for all kinds of things. Overtime pay, vacation pay, uh, uh, medical insurance. Uh, these are all things that an employee would be entitled to, which we have not been entitled to, although we have been treated as an employee uh, by the law. All right. Uh, next article says... Uh, in major AB5 court ruling, San Diego judge says Instacart likely to flunk contractor test. So here again, Instacart, that's where people uh, shop for food and then drivers drive the food to, uh, to the houses of the people that ordered it. And the judge is saying here that, no, those, those folks are just, <laughs> just like Uber and Lyft drivers. They're going to flunk the test. And they're going to have to be classified as employees or some kind of an arrangement is going to have to be made to which both parties are happy. So it's kind of raining down hard on these, uh, these gig economy companies uh, because they're treating the drivers like employees. And yet they don't want to pay us like employees. They want to pay us as independent contractors. So that's a problem. And that's a problem that's now getting worked out. Um, here in California, at least. Interesting story now. CNN Business DoorDash, which we were just talking about, prepares to go public as stark as stock market plunges. So this just seems like really bad timing for DoorDash. Uh, they just they just got ruled against in the in the case I was talking to you before, and now because of the coronavirus, they have nothing to do with the coronavirus. But as a result of the coronavirus, the stock markets dropped like. 12%, 10 to 12%. I don't know. I haven't looked at it today. Um, and and this is the time that they're getting ready to go uh, public. So uh, we'll see if they change their going public date or not. Um, but this th can't be good for them financially. So DoorDash is a company that's going through quite a bit right now. And then uh, that's it. All right. So um, if you are a driver... It's an interesting time. It's an interesting time. And with all this going on, what do we drivers do? We just keep driving, right? We just keep driving and we get paid what we get paid. And uh, Uber keeps throwing some you know, new, new uh, features at us to, to give us the, uh, the feeling that we're uh, you know, true independent contractors. And uh, those don't seem to be working. So it's, uh, it's an interesting time. All we can do is drive, make the money that they're paying us, and uh, get to work on the plan B so that uh, this isn't something you're dependent upon in order to uh, 
you know, to put food on the table. This uh, needs to become as quickly as possible going from a full-time job to a part-time job to a uh, no job where you're doing something else. So get to work on your plan B. And uh, if you go to the Rideshare guy, we got a whole section of stories and inspirational stuff and ideas uh, about other things you could be doing while you're also driving. So uh, that's called Life After Rideshare, and that's on the uh, the Rideshare Guy website. Okay, that's uh, that's it. That's it. I wanted to just share with you what I what I have been writing about and what I've learned about uh, this ongoing uh, situation with uh, with employee versus independent contractor and AB five. And in this case, um, DoorDash, really, really in the news in a big way. All right, that's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You all rock it out there every day. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Uh, be safe out there. This is Jay Crater, a.k.a. Nomad Jay, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.